we're building a $400 budget gaming PC today. Wrong. We're building two $400 budget gaming PCs. I am of the strong opinion that PC gaming doesn't have to be super expensive. And while yes, this PC won't get you PlayStation 5 levels of gameplay, it's also $100 cheaper. And it's not just a gaming machine, it's a whole dang computer. You can browse the web, use Discord, edit videos, work a whole damn job, run any operating system you want, basically do anything. Considering you can do all of that, I think $400 is an absolute steal for these PCs. Let's go over what the specs are of this machine and how I acquired all the components. For reference, I live in the USA and I acquired 100% of these components online. I'll leave Amazon affiliate links in the description if you decide you wanna buy any of these yourself. Picking up motherboard for this was kind of tricky. LGA 1200 socket type motherboards are still sold as new, but they're way overpriced on Amazon. I wanted to find a simple motherboard that had everything we needed, and luckily I found the B460M from Gigabyte fit the bill perfectly. It had the right form factor, and I found someone on eBay that was willing to send me two for $50 each and free shipping. Now these guys aren't top of the line with all the M2 expansion and RGB headers, but this is a budget PC build, baby, and sacrifices need to be made. A lower cost motherboard won't affect gaming performance in any way possible. The upgrade path is pretty simple as you could easily put something as high as k in this exact motherboard and replace the graphics card with something like an RTX 3080. By the way guys, I'm only covering how to save money on PC hardware in this video. But if you want to learn how to save way more money on the actual games you're playing, check out my video here. I go over all the best ways to get games for dirt cheap or even free. The RAM on this machine was pretty straightforward. I bought 16 gigs of DDR4 3200 megahertz RAM. It's more than enough for the CPU and it's pretty cheap on Amazon. Sure, I could have found a cheaper one for a few dollars, but 3200 megahertz is the standard now, especially just for Intel devices, so I went ahead and picked them up for $45. For the red build, I got G-Skill, and for the green one, just a standard silicon power pair. Uh, there aren't any good looking green RAM, unfortunately. The power supply could have been something as low as 400 watts, and it would have been fine. But I wanted to add something a little higher just to allow whoever buys this PC to upgrade down the line and not worry about the PSU. So I picked the EVGA 600 watt white variant. It has a five-year warranty and sells for only $40 on Amazon. In the future, someone could use this PSU to power something as high as even a 3070 and be just fine. The case. Oh, the case. I could have gone with something cheap like a DIY PC junker case on Newegg, but I wanted to try something new and get something that people don't often see. So I found this weird case manufacturer on Amazon called Ryrotech. They sold this MATX case with a few RGB case fans for $70. It's a pretty good deal. I went ahead and ordered two, and I wanted to give them a try. Building in them was pretty nice, to be honest, uh, but we need to talk about the fans. I did not read the listing correctly, and it turns out the fans that come with the machine only stay rainbow unicorn vomit colors. You can't pick and choose. So if you want a case that comes with fans where you can choose the RGB color, pick something like the Apivia Prodigy. I'll link both of them in the description. I didn't have time to order a new case, so I just went ahead and swapped the fans with addressable RGB fans I had on hand. I don't recommend doing this though, just buy a case that has RGB fans already. I wanted to get something cheap for the storage, so I just bought a 2.5 inch 250 gig SSD, but if you wanted to spend like $40 more, you can get a one terabyte SSD easily for that price. I would actually recommend doing that if you're copying this build. Save up the extra money. Moving along to the CPU slash processor. I wanted to get something that was DDR4 compatible, but still also be somewhat relevant. The 10100F is a four core eight thread beast that can boost up to 4.3 gigahertz, which is absolutely insane for this price. Considering I got these for $60 each on Amazon, the price to performance are insane and will be more than enough for these graphics cards. Luckily, the seller also provided the original fans, and since these aren't super hot and powerful CPUs, I think using the stock fans will be just fine. If you replicate this build, feel free to go with an aftermarket CPU cooler for like 20 bucks. For me, I don't love the look of the traditional Intel stock cooler fans, so I just took it outside, removed the heatsink, and spray painted it with whatever black paint I could find in my garage. If you do this though, try to tape off the fan connector and go super light on the layers, especially on the fan blades. But I didn't do any of that because, and to quote my dad here, I'm a big stupid idiot. Arguably, the most important part of a gaming PC is the graphics card. So for this build, I chose the GTX 1066 gig, which despite being five years old at this point, is still an amazing card for cost of performance. For God's sakes, you can play Elden Ring on this thing at reasonable frame rates. Now the price of 1060s have been all over the place lately, but I was able to snag a deal on Reddit's r slash hardware swap from someone for $180 for the pair, which included shipping, meaning I paid $90 per card. I'll admit this is a good deal that will be hard to replicate, but even on eBay, you can get these for about 110, 120 at most. So that handles pretty much all the essential hardware components of this machine, but I wanted to add a little flair, a little. I really like the idea of giving themes to gaming rigs. So to add a little fun to these, 
I wanted to theme them after two of my favorite Pokemon. I found some cheap PSU extensions on Amazon for $14, and I even bought one of those stupid Funko Pops to put inside. And this is all 100% optional. But if you have a few extra dollars, it's fun to customize your computer to fit your aesthetic. All right, here are the two completed machines. We have Bulbasaur and Charmander. Two awesome budget builds at just about $400 each. I love how they came out and think they could fit into anyone's gaming setup very easily. And sure, they look good and the price is right. But can they game? I'm not much of a benchmark guy, but I tried out a few different games on them just to see what the average FPS was. Hey guys, Future Jason here. So I'm editing this video right now and it turns out all the benchmark files I took got corrupted. They're just completely gone. I don't know what happened. So I found someone named Dot Game who did a bunch of benchmarks on a PC that was pretty much identical to this one. So I'm gonna post his footage. It's not mine, it's his footage, but it's very nearly close to what I received on the same config. Okay, back to the video. Starting at the bottom, we need to try Valorant for some reason. This game can run on a Samsung smart fridge, but people feel the need to ask how many FPS this game can run. So on 1080p at low settings, I was able to get 260 FPS on average, meaning we could probably see similar performance in other esports titles like League of Legends, CSGO, and Fortnite. Going up the gameplay ladder, I wanted to try something a little harder. So I booted up Ghost Runner, which has some amazing graphics and isn't as well known. On mid settings, I was able to get 80 FPS on average when fighting enemies. This is incredible performance considering we are playing on a machine that costs $100 less than a PlayStation 5. I wanted to prove that this game can play high-end stuff like Elden Ring. I wanted to see the performance fighting random enemies. And while this thing isn't getting ray tracing or playing in 4K resolution, I was able to get 50 to 60 FPS average in a game that came out in 2022. That's amazing. Elden Ring's FPS is capped at 60 anyway, so it's more than enough. I am super happy with the performance of these machines, and I hope whoever buys them has a great time playing any game they want on a new gaming computer. I love building budget rigs, because I hate this idea that console plebs come up with saying, oh, you have to spend $3,000 to play on PC gaming. It's just not true. Sure, you can spend that much if you want, but it's absolutely possible to play games on PC for way, way less money. We just did it for less than the cost of a PS5. Now, this build might be impossible to copy exactly, considering I got some good deals on eBay and hardware swap, but this isn't meant to copy exactly. This is supposed to give you an idea of what it takes to get a great PC online for a good price. You need to be able to be flexible with what you're buying. While this PC used a 1060, maybe you can find a 1070 for $100 or something. Get creative with how you find your parts and you can make some amazing machines. Don't be afraid to look locally as well. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. I'll be posting more technology videos very soon and would love for you to come on this journey with me. My name is Jason. Thanks for watching and see you later.